not not sure where the last video ended but you took out the shifter of the transfer case so that uh, you can decrease the height of the transmission to get it out from under the frame of the vehicle even though I have it quite lifted up bring you under here now oh my lord I'm just not young anymore there's the rear of the vehicle supported on some 12 ton jack stands so it's well supported the rear drive shaft which has to become undone the front drive shaft which has to become undone and then the transmission itself which has to become undone this is the shifter link which had to be taken off from the shifter upstairs there so that well you take it out you can see where there's a mark so I won't have to make a mark when it's put back together it really needs to be put back there because this is what shifts your transmission and if it's not put in the right place then reverse may not be reverse drive may not be drive and so forth and so on so there's a lot left to be done I do believe I'm going to take the transfer case from here back off um, just to get some weight off of this thing and uh, then we'll pull it out there's a lot to be done I will try to keep you in touch as we move along I'll edit all this junk later anyway fun 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 talk to y'all later bye okay during this take out and probably not rebuild but put in a used one transmission going to be using this old compressor quite a bit she is a nifty thing it's an old clark it's got some weights Let's see if i can show them see them there and as you spin centripetal force happens and they go around and go out when they do they move this see that little nifty action there and that is a uh, decompression valve so that once it turns on boom holds it so that it's not open anymore kind of cool little old thing we're gonna be using it a lot probably fixing to put it into practice right now um, getting ready to take the drive shafts out we'll let you know how much fun that is bye okay <coughs> we're under here um, and we're gonna start with removing the rear drive shaft flange then I will more than likely also remove these two bolts holding up the center support that way I can let the whole thing down and just slide it out to the side getting it completely out of our way for the most part I don't want to disconnect the rear I could slide it out of its yoke down there I'm not yoking it's it's down there uh, and but if I do I would mark it because it's all in alignment and I have made the mistake long ago in my past of not marking a drive shaft when uh, disconnecting it. That's not a good idea. I do not recommend it at all. Okay, we're going to pause it for a minute so I can put this thing in neutral. Okay, tubers. Here we go again. And you can see I have, I mean, I've removed this transmission maybe three times before. I've broken two flex plates, which is not really the transmission. An automatic transmission, it's what could be considered your flywheel, although it's not a flywheel. Um, it's what the starter goes against to turn the engine. It's got gears on it, you'll see it later. And it's what bolts from the output of the engine into the torque converter of the transmission. So that's how the engine and transmission are hooked together. I uh, won't go into explaining how a torque converter works, but it's really nifty. Maybe we'll talk about it later. All I wanted you to see right now is before when I had taken this apart, I had marked it with some nail polish. My daughter has unknowingly donated to the cause, and uh, she has unknowingly giving me some more nail polish 
Uh, so we are going to put on some wet and wild uh, nail polish from Maybelline, maybe. I, I can't read that crap. I'm too old. So we're going to remark it, and uh, I probably won't have to mark the rest of it. If we do, I'll, I'll show you that. Not really that important. So here we go. Hello, tubers. Okay, just use my uh, real fancy uh, air gun here. You know, this is my my horror freight uh, one. Uh, they, they don't warranty these. It's a earthquake. It is a, it is a real snoochy kind of thing. I'm sure made in Taiwan or somewhere really high techy nifty like that on the backwoods of the bamboo forest. But <coughs> the what I wanted to show you it works actually really well and I got the uh, the nut off just using it but you need to take some time to see how things are oriented there is a washer it goes on the nut side I found on different Toyotas I've worked on sometimes it goes on this side and I don't know why I'm getting choked but I am it's very emotional down here I may cry um, so we're going to go after this one next. You can see it's marked with my daughter's beautiful hot pink Maybelline Wicked Wild stuff. Um, so we're going to go after the rest. No need for you to see all that. Since I do have the shifter disengaged, it's real easy for me to reach up here and put it in neutral and park. And that way I can turn this to different positions and have it hold. We'll take off the rest. See you later. Welcome back, tubers. We're now looking at some quality Toyota parts. Talk about dependable. They can function with almost, what, 75% of their parts missing. Here is the, the front of the rear drive shaft that I have now disconnected or unbolted from the transmission. This leading back to the uh, center bearing, this fellow right here. Um, I went to notice, or actually my son did, centipedes all over me, man. You must get off of me, brother. Um, there is one bolt and nut holding the front drill well, the front part of the rear drive shaft to the rear part of the rear drive shaft, because as I turn, look here, we got hole number one, no bolt no nut. We got number two, no bolt, no nut. Number three, no bolt, no nut. But the Toyota was still just duking stoching right along. Um, yeah, rather scary. I agree. But, you know, takes a beat and keeps on ticking the little thing. Gotta appreciate her. So I'm going to go ahead and take these two off, drop the center uh, down, uh, because you can see with all the U-joints, uh, double cardian joint here, it'll drop down real far like a hyperextended knee where you tore the ACL, MCL, and medial meniscus. Just so you'll know, that's called the unhappy triad of O'Donohue. So we're going to rip this down here and then be able to get the drive shaft really out of our way altogether. Talk to y'all later. Okay, tubers. Oh man, I didn't know things have been recording. Uh, I guess I gotta edit out a lot. This is the uh, transfer case right here. And this is the front drive shaft, the rear portion of the front drive shaft. You can see the bolts are still in it. And, da-da, there are the bolts, nuts, sorry. And just uh, to let you know the orientation, because I've had quite a few Toyotas in the past. On these, the lock washer, split lock washer, is on the nut side, okay? I have had it where they put the split lock washers on the bolt side over here. Not the case this time. 
So if uh, y'all have one apart and need to refer back to this, there you go. That's the, excuse me, that's the way they did it from the factory, um, which I'm assuming they just thought they was doing it all right over there in Japan. Let's see. Um, I'll bring y'all back in a bit. Bye. We have removed the center support for the transmission. It was a metal piece. It's uh, right there on the ground. It also had a hook up here for the uh, support for the exhaust system. This little rubber hanger took it off. And uh, it connected here, let me see, right there. Two bolts, two nuts, and uh, over there, right there. And as you can see now, I have some uh, Chaiwan nylonish uh, stuff holding it up. I, I read somewhere it was made from unicorn hair, so I'm pretty sure I can trust it complicitly with my life while I am crawling under there, uh, assured that it won't flatten me to a uh, U.S. American crisp. I also removed the dynamic balancer, just because I like to get things out of the way. And there on the floor, you can see the rubber mount that mounts the cross member it goes to the frame I just showed you to the transmission itself and the rubber is intact it's not cracked so there's no problem with that and I also neglected to tell you guys that uh, this wonderful piece of engineering uh, from China sorry sorry can't believe I just said that Japan holy moly where is my Asianist knowledge gone uh, it is definitely from Japan it is a Tacoma, it is a 2001, it has a 3.4 liter V6 engine, which has never been touched other than timing belts. I have never had to adjust the valves, um, never done anything else. It still runs just perfectly. Uh, the transmission does seem to have uh, just, you know, slipped the weenie. I do believe it's gone, unless I get in there and find out that the flex plate went again, which it is not giving symptoms of that really, or the torque converter inside the torque converter just completely just went smush uh, I Other than that, the transmission itself is toast. Uh, I am going to go ahead and take off the transfer case just to get rid of some weight and bulk and I do believe it will make it a little bit easier to get to the transmission bolts themselves. Uh, I'm fixing to go ahead and drain the transfer case and transmission and uh, you know could find out a little bit about that. I am not going to take off the pan of the transmission. I think I may wait and do that once I have it all off. I, I, uh, I, I really don't even want to look inside there right now. I think I may cry. But that's where we are. I don't know if I told you, this thing has 330,000 miles on it. And uh, the only time I've, times I've pulled out the transmission was because I cracked the flex plate. It was not the transmission or truck's fault. I was towing 11,000 pounds with this truck, which I think is rated for 5,000. That's my own stupidity and it's very unsafe. I do not recommend ever doing that, especially without trailer brakes, which I did not have, e even just, just beyond stupid. And then uh, the other time I was using the engine brake with an extremely heavy load in the back, putting a ton of force onto the flex plate. Again, you know, it was my fault. I paid the price. I'm not blaming the truck for any of that. It has 300,000 miles on it. It has been excellent. It did have the frame recall. Uh, you can see they didn't really call it a recall, I don't think, but they put a new frame on it. And, uh, you know, it's doing pretty well. While I am under here and I have everything off, there are a few places that I will show you that I'm going to brush with a... Uh, aqueous solution called Osphor. It uh, has phosphoric acid and some other nifty things in it and uh, once uh, ferrous metal is coated with that it won't rust again pretty much. So I'll, you know, we'll be getting to all that sort of stuff later. I think next is going to be the removal of the uh, bolts for the transfer case itself after I go ahead and drain it. I'll bring you back, uh, maybe in the middle of taking the transfer case off, uh, 
Not sure about that yet. Let you know. See y'all later. Welcome back to my trip to the underworld. I am in the process of unbolting the transfer case. I had no expectations that it would be easy, but Toyota put some fun little bolts up here at the very top of the transfer case. Now, it wouldn't be so bad if these here little solenoid sensor doodaddies, whatever they are, if they weren't in the way. But there's one up here on this side and one on the other side. It will take you a U joint. It will take some very creative words. I, for the most part, refer to them as sheep banging bastages and fargan ice holes. I attempt to use words that are not exactly, well, cuss words, but they do make you feel better to say them, dead gummit. Um, so, they are completely loose. There are some more. These two, well, let's see, coming to view, there they are, that one and that one. They will be simple to get to. These, I got to fairly easily. We'll just slide over here and skin off some more hair on the back of our head. There is another one right there. And another one right there. That wasn't too bad. But this one, there you go, maybe into view by the light of day. That one up there, well, there's just one, but there's two little, whatever they are, electronic somethings that just, I mean, even using a U joint and extensions to be longer than a, well, I won't say that longer than they need to be. You know, with a little bit of prayer and creative wording, they do come out. I will, I will witness to that. So what I'm gonna do is, I still left some of these in place so it won't just completely fall, which I don't think it will anyway, because it's got an input shaft that goes into the transmission. So I, you know, it's not just gonna fall, but I'm gonna, practice on the side of safety a little bit which I typically do not do I will unbolt the other two I will get a jack under here and I will get this thing out of the way I, I may not use a jack I, I don't know I won't film that so you know if I do have to wind up going to the urgent care or something I'll maybe let you know or just keep that out of the film talk to y'all later bye okay thought I might go ahead and attempt to transfer case out of this thing it's uh you can see here it's broken loose a little bit there's some pins to hold it in place and uh the drive shaft is i'm sure holding it a little bit i'm gonna try to get that loose right here if i can without killing myself let me see if i can get something to pry with there we go. It's working a little bit. There we go. Okay, so the drive shaft may be coming loose. So I'm kind of in the point of no return right now. There we go. There is one. Oh, gre uh, grease in my eye. That's what that is. And oh, <laughs> yeah. It feels good on my chest. Is that the transfer Woo! case? Man. She's a big one. She is a spandex wearing Walmart walking woman laying right on me. Okay, I'm fixing to get this thing off. Ah, get and now your 2000 Tacoma's transfer case has been removed. Oh, yeah. She's <laughs> on the ground. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for not letting me die. Okay. Let me get this transmission grease out of my eye. And I'll show you the transfer case on the ground. Oh gosh. Okay. There it is. There she is right there. Yeah, she's not not crazy heavy. Mostly aluminum. And I'll show you what I see from inside here. Okay. Actually let me turn the camera around. You're gonna need a new seal for that. Because I don't really care to be on the camera that much myself. How do I turn this thing around? There, figured it out. 
So that is the back of the transmission that the uh, transfer case woo, hooked on to. And uh, these little boogers up here were the snot wads. They were very difficult to get off. There's some pins that'll help align it when we put her back together. There's a little vacuum hose that if you don't take off, you will rip two pieces. Um, and so for now, because of taking that off, I think, let me straighten this out, I think I'll be better able to get way back in there. Okay, there's some bolts for the transmission that I need to take off. I'm not going to have any good way of showing you those. Nah, maybe try later. But uh, I think with the transfer case off, I'll be better able to get to it. And also, too, you know, after 330,000 miles, I would just say it's a good time to replace that seal. And when I do get the transmission off, I will show you the rear seal on the back of the engine. Whether it's leaking or not, it's going to be replaced. I didn't replace it the other times. It's quite likely leaking because of uh, all that good gooey greasiness in there. And uh, could be coming from valve covers, but probably not. So I will inform you later as we move on to the next step of removing this transmission. Bye.